You too. How's it going? Good. Yes, we're live. Hello, everyone's saying I'm ready and waiting. Hello, Emily. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Adette. Lovely to see you here. So this is my friend, Christy. Look what I found. I love that picture. <laughs> Christy is an amazing artist and she runs the social easel and I know her from the online world and we met in Canada which is where this picture was <laughs> last year and we said that we would hook up and do something and time flew by and now here we are <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> thank you for having me I'm so excited Oh, thank you for being here because it's just crazy. We've been trying to hook up for a, a long time, haven't we? Yeah. And finally, and you know, like, <laughs> no, I want to meet your guys. So thank you so much for joining us. Everyone is so excited. Well, good. Take uh, yeah, I hope you guys will have fun learning how to do some flowers. Yeah, that's it. You were like, what should we do? And everyone was saying to me, you know what? It's kind of spring and we're not feeling it yet. So let's get into the mood and the, the spring vibe. So I sent a list out to everybody of things that you need, but if you don't have them, don't worry, because you can still watch this and get so much out of it. So don't worry if you haven't got the materials, bring anything along, just take notes, or if you do have your materials, get them ready. We can start making as Christy um, guides us. So I'm gonna be in the background. I'm gonna switch my camera off so that you can just see Christy. Okay. And then I'm going to check the comments. So please, if you have any questions, we have Christy for the next hour. Please <laughs> ask her anything because this is like gold. Yeah, we've got access to Christy. So just fire questions away as we're working through. Um, and I think that's it. I've got my paints ready. I might have a little go if, if I get chance in between. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll start um, with showing you guys supplies that I'm going to use. And then I was actually going to take the camera and bring you guys over here and give you like an aerial view awesome. of uh, so you can really see hands on what I'm doing. Yeah, everyone's saying I need flowers. Hello, hello from South Africa. Hello from West Ireland, says Dee. Oh, how cool, Lovely hi. Evening. People from all around the world, awesome. Yes, very, very cool. put in the comments where you're from because we will look back at the comments. So we'd love to know where you're tuning in from. So let us know and um right okay everyone's ready so i'm going to put you on full screen now christy okay. i will check the comments and let you know what's coming in um, okay there we go there you are all right hi guys um so i am going to do some palette knife flowers with you today and i've got a few examples behind me um that i'm gonna hold up and show you too so i love flowers all kinds of florals um they're one of my favorite things to paint and so I thought it would be perfect for this time of year. We all need something cheery and happy right now. So that's what I want to bring you guys. Um, you can tell I like flowers. They're literally all around me from behind. So I'm going to show you with palette knife, but you can also use um, brushes. So it's a very similar technique, whether you're using a palette knife or a brush. So I just have a basic round. This is like a number two. Doesn't have to be that size. Even a bigger one would be better for some of the bigger, fatter flowers we're gonna make. And I like to have, this is an angled. This is a five eighths inch. It doesn't have a number, but you can kind of get an idea of size on that. So those are the two brushes I like to use when I'm doing flowers. And then I've got a couple different palette knives. So my absolute favorite one is this guy. It's very small and you're able to do a lot more detailing with it. I believe this is, yeah, this is a one. And then I've got this other one. I have so much paint on them. This is a number three. So I usually use this one for my backgrounds. So if you guys will be patient with me, I'm gonna show you a few examples and then we're gonna create our own. So this is one that I did the other day. And all that metallic that you see on there is actually foils. So another one of my um, artistic friends does um, foil art and she was showing me how I could use it in my canvas. So I tried that out on here. But this is an example of some palette knife flowers I did, palette knife background and vase. And then this one is like my country flowers. You can kind of see the texture on there. Oh, it's so really lively, thick, I love it. Mm. Really thick texture. And then this one, this is um, 
I actually redid this painting. So this painting was like five years old and it just had a boring blue background. And I decided to take the palette knife and scrape up all the edges, go over the bike and just give it that really rustic look. And then same thing with these flowers. So the thing I love about palette knife flowers is there's no, um, sorry, Lee, try to be that straight. There's no real rules. Like you can be messy. Like this is not about um, being perfect. Like I always tell my students, like, don't even like take that off the plate. There's no such thing as perfection. Um, you know, we don't need to strive for it in our work. We just need to have fun doing it. And with palette knife painting, it's really, for me, it's very freeing because sometimes, and you'll see this once we get started, you'll do something with your palette knife and it kind of controls your painting for you, if that makes any sense. And you, or you're like, oh, that looks really cool. Like it'll pick up another color from underneath behind it. So um, that kind of gives you an idea of what we're doing. And we're just going to come up with our own little composition today. Um, let me move these. So Christy, can I just quickly ask, if, if someone's listening now and they haven't got access to palette knives, do you have any advice like how someone could improvise? Like, you really could take yeah. like a butter knife. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can use anything, cut an old cereal box and bend it over. You know, if you've got nothing and you want to join in now, then just grab something. And another thing um, that I was telling my students, let's see, like any, like an old gift card, credit card, you know, what, any of the hard plastic card. I cut yeah. those, well, you know, when I don't need them anymore. And I use those like I do palette knife too, especially if you're doing the scrapes and stuff. So you can really, you know, you can use what materials you have on hand. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, it does. Thank you. And then um, I'm going to show you what we're going to paint with today is craft paints. Um, so I'm not sure, depending on where people live, I don't know what everyone has accessible to them. But these are just little tubes of craft paint. They're really thin. Um, so sometimes if you're doing working with palette knife, and I'll show you this, I add um, gel medium to the craft paint and it makes it thicker like you would have in like an artist grade art tube of paint. So again, just kind of using different things. If you've got thick paint like this, it's gonna work great with palette knife. If you don't and you have thinner paint, you can add gel medium to it and it thickens your paint up for you. All right, I'm gonna try to swing you guys over here. So bear with me, hopefully I don't like knock you off while I'm flipping you around. All right, you guys see the studio desk yeah. okay? Perfect, yeah, yeah. All right, and then I am gonna pull your feed up on um, my iPad so I can kind of see what you guys are seeing. So this is how I teach inside of my membership group. Um, so this is how I work with my students so they can get a really good view of what I'm doing. Do we have any questions so far? No, but fire away if anyone has any. Uh, Hannah's just tuned in and said, thank you, Christy. I've not heard of you before, but just checked out your Facebook page and fell in love with your mission, your art and faith. I'm a faith-based Christian artist based in Berkshire, England. I'm so excited to learn from you. Oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. awesome. Isn't it? Thank Bar you. Barbie's tuned in from Canada. Jenny's tuned in from Derby in the UK. Laura's tuned in from Canada. Hi, guys. Hello, hello. Okay, so what I am painting in today um, is called a mixed media pad. And I'm just going to show this to you guys really quick. So this is what it looks like. Um, this is what I tell my students. I recommend everybody getting one of these when you start, um, start painting because it's kind of like a sketchbook for painting. So it can take acrylics. It can take heavy acrylics. And if you love it and you create something in here that you want to keep, you can actually tear the pages out and then frame them. Um, and then if you're just practicing, like earlier today, I was doing a color mixing lesson and just showing them how to get different colors and then just how to do some different brush strokes. So this is just a really good thing to have to practice technique in. So if you're wanting like to do the abstract flowers like we're doing today, a lot of my students will fill up like three pages of practice before they like go to a canvas to do it. So let's pick our colors. I'll get a clean palette. I always recycle my plates here. Anyone have any suggestions on colors for me? Yeah, fire you away. You can shout some out if you want. 
I'm going to start grabbing some of my favorites. Yeah. Well, let us know what colors you'll be using, guys. So this one is a deep magenta. This one's called dragon fruit. And this is where I can show you the difference. So see how thick that paint is. Michelle, do you guys have like craft paint like this over there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Yeah. But that name, what was that name of that paint you're using? Dragon? Uh, dragon fruit. Oh, I love that name. I've not come across that before. Yeah, I love this color. It's real like, yeah, it's like a pretty hot pink. But I'm just going to kind of use this as an example to show you guys the difference between the different type of paint yeah. and how I can change that. I love gel medium. It's so fun to add texture to your paintings. So it looks like it's white, but it's actually going to go um, clear. So I'm just going to take a, just a decent amount of that and mix it in to that dragon fruit color that I had. And now I've got thicker paint, like I do that deep magenta. Maybe do a little pop of some yellow and coral. And if you guys have any ideas, you can shout them out to us. Katie's using lilac, Matthew's using blue. Oh, I have this really, this is a light orchid. This is a really pretty color too. And like I said, you don't have to add gel medium to these. I'm going to show you both ways and just kind of like uh, the difference of what it looks like. This is like a dark Hauser green. So just like an evergreen color. And then I want kind of a minty, this one's called mint julep green. So I want a couple different shades of green. So I think those are gonna be my flower colors and my leaves. And so how many colors would you recommend? Um, that means, four, five, six, about six. Yeah, this, so yeah, this is, and, and I may add something else because I'm like looking at my like other one. Um, I'm kind of thinking I want to do like a box of flowers with you guys. So I may even throw in two more colors. Now I tend to go overboard in color. If you guys um, do visit my page, you'll see that I like a lot of color. So like this is one of my newest paintings and it has like every color under the rainbow. <laughs> so <laughs> Um, I think of you, I do think of color. Yeah, so it's nice and bright. Um, so what I'm going to do first, I just can't decide what color I want my um, my vase to be. Maybe we'll do like a, let's do something. We'll do another bright color. Some aqua on here. So this is usually how I start. And you can make this shape that your flowers are going to be in whatever you want them to be. I think I'm going to go with like a square shape. And I'm just going to start scraping this on. So when you are working with palette knife, you scoop it up and it goes on the back side of your knife. Of the people on here, how many, um, how many of you guys have worked with palette knife before or is this something new to you? Let us know in the comments. Um, Sarah's late to the session. Are you using acrylic? Yes. Yeah. So I, I teach painting with all acrylics just because of the dry time. It's easier to teach lessons and it's, um, you know, a little bit more accessible to people. So these are all acrylics. I'm just going to grab a little white here. And this is what I like too. So you can get a couple colors on your palette knife like this. And then you get these cool little scrapes of a little bit different color in there. Um, Diddy says, I have, but nobody ever taught me how really. Um, Tracy's yeah. used palette knives once or twice. Uh, Rebecca's used a little bit in palette knives. So it looks like a little small amount. Cool. You know, it's funny. I. Um, I just learned palette knife painting probably two and a half years ago. And once I learned it, I fell in love with it and the, the messiness of it and the freeness of it. And now it's in 
almost all of my paintings. <laughs> <laughs> So basically I'm just scraping different directions, okay? And just adding that texture in there. And then you'll get two different types of uh, texture by doing this. So right now I'm doing wet on wet. If I let this dry and then I come back and scrape some colors over top of it later, it's gonna look even more different. So you can come back and that's kind of like what I did in this painting. So I let the teal dry on the bike and then once it was dry i came back with white as my highlight and did these quick scrapes so it doesn't blend too much with your color behind there all right so we'll start with that as our base and i think i'm gonna do I want to do some background also, so I'm going to switch palette knives and go to this larger one. And this is the color I'm looking for. This is Blue Harbor. It's a really pretty kind of like periwinkle color. So another thing you can do if you don't want to squirt it out on your palette and then apply it to your canvas or your mixed media pad, whatever you're painting on, if you're doing palette knife and you know it's going to be messy anyways, you can squirt it straight on. And again, this is just fun, you know, like making art like a kid. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just slapping it on. <laughs> um, Didi's asking, how thick is the paint on the page that you're that you're working on, Christy? Um, how thick is the paint? Yeah, yeah. So it was just this is just like an artist grade acrylic. Um, so it's not like Try to hold that up. It's not like super, super thick, but it does have some dimension to it. Yeah. Now, and if you wanted yeah. it to really, really have a lot of dimension and, you know, kind of stick off your canvas or your page a little bit more, you would add more gel medium to it. Does that help to kind of see a little yeah, bit closer? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, Emma's saying, I hope you don't mind, but I've shared this onto my coffee shop page. Absolutely not. Share it everywhere, guys. Yeah, share <laughs> away. <laughs> Uh, this is saying she um, hasn't worked with palette knives and she rarely paints actually. So this is something completely new. That's oh, good. Cool. You have to let us know, Alicia, how you find it. So you guys see how quick and crazy and messy I'm doing this background right now. But that's what to me is so fun about it. Cheryl's asking, is there a reason you didn't detach your paper before starting? Um, I like to leave it in my book. So, um, so I don't have papers all over my studio because I use it so much. So like, I'm just going to show you my, my one, this is a brand new one that I have, but like, I literally use it like a sketchbook with painting. And so it's got all my pages of work in here. And then if I do like it, then I can tear it out and flatten it and frame it. Yeah, I do that. I kind of like having the books and it's fun to go back and look at them too and your processes yeah. and... Now you will, as heavy as the paint is that I'm putting on here, you will notice if you're doing a mixed media pad, it will warp a little bit while you're painting, but that won't be a problem when you go to frame it. So what I do is I let it dry completely and then I'll lay it under something heavy to flatten it out and then I frame it and you can't tell that it ever did warp when you're working on it. Okay. Oh, so relaxing using the palette knife, just scraping. Oh, so nice. I know, isn't it fun? Yeah. <laughs> so then we're going to jump over to the flowers and just kind of start deciding where, where we want our bouquet or basket of flowers, whatever we've got here, how we want it to be. And I'm just going to start with one color, then I'm going to bounce to the other. And I'm basically making like rough circles. So it's what we're getting ready to do is not that's not what it's going to look like in the final painting so this is like stage one i always tell my students trust the process it may not look beautiful while we're doing it but it will all come together in the end we were talking about this earlier about ugly painting and how you've got to go through the phases <laughs> yes yes you got to go through the phases and so i'm doing this straight on that wet background because i think it's going to be pretty to have some of that periwinkle kind of accent in to some of our flowers. If you didn't want it to do that, you could blow dry this or let it dry and come back to it. 
um, and then they, they wouldn't mix. So I start by just kind of like you're making the letter C, okay? And you're just going around one direction with your palette knife, and then you're coming back around and making that circular shape. So when I am doing this, I'm not, if you can see how lightly I was doing that, just like barely dragging it across the canvas. I'm not pushing down really hard. So you're just doing this light little pulls, so to say. I kind of think of it like parentheses, you know? So you've got the parentheses one direction and then bring it back around the other way and connect them. And we'll continue that inside when we add our accents. So I just want to hold this a little bit closer so you guys can kind of see the, the texture and the thickness. Yeah, because Sarah's asking, why palette knife, uh, palette knife over brush? What is the effect? Um, um, you can't get the same, the, like the way these scrapes are, you can't really achieve that with a brush. You can get similar, like if you did some dry brushing with it, but it just has a different look to it. And I can show you like with, because I was saying you could use brushes for this. So let's do our next flower with brush instead. So look how much paint I get on there. It's a decent amount. And I'm going to do the same thing, that curved shape one way and then curve it back around. And then I'm going to hold this up so you guys can see a little bit closer just the difference in how they look. Yeah. Yeah. Can you guys tell? Yeah. So much flatter with the brush. Right. And again, you could keep layering that and keep making it thicker. For me, it really just comes down to personal preference. I mean, you can do any of those flower paintings I showed you. You could do them with palette knife or paintbrush. And I tell my students that too, because some people are like me, like once they start using the palette knife, they fall in love with it. And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with it. And some people are like, I just really struggle with it. Yeah. And I say keep practicing because I really do think the more you do it, the more you'll love it. But I told them, like, um, I had a palette knife painting with a chapel and a lot of them, you know, they didn't like using the palette knife. So they did it with paintbrush and it turned out beautiful. So there is no right or wrong. Yeah, it's just have a play, see how you find it. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to kind of vary my size of my flowers. We don't want them all identical. So are you painting along too, Michelle? I am. I'm still on the background because I'm really fun <laughs> <and> therapeutic. <laughs> I know. So I always tell my people, uh, you know, I... I paint pretty fast. So don't feel like you don't feel like you have to keep up with me, and that's why I love doing the videos because once I I teach live inside of my group, but then they can go back and watch them whenever they want to. So I sometimes even recommend to them to watch the first time and then go back and then do, and it. do it with me the second time, and they can pause it and rewind it if they need to see a step again. But I'm finding it quite relax relaxing, you know, using the palette knife and just seeing all the different marks and the patterns that are emerging. And it's just really therapeutic just to sit and watch that happening. It is. I agree. And just to like watch it come together. Like that's mm. kind of what I was saying. Like with palette knife painting, you're like kind of just watching it do its thing because <laughs> you don't know exactly what a, a stroke is going to look like until you get it on there. Okay, did he say, yikes, I've kind of got mud. Okay, so have you got any tips on muddy? When, when, so do you muddy? mean like maybe like your colors are blending together too much? I if think that's, that's what she's meaning, yeah. Yeah, so what I would do is um, where it's muddy, go ahead and like leave that section, uh, let it dry and come back to it. Um, so if you get to where your colors are mixing together too much, or, you know, like maybe your pink's mixing into your green. Well, that's going to give you like a brownish neutral color. So, um, like I said, you can blow dry it and speed that process up if you want to. Um, or you can like move on to another section of your painting and let that dry and then come back to it. So um, when that happens, you know, I usually tell my group, just let it dry. Anytime you make a mistake or something like 
messes up in your, you know, like a happy accident in your painting, um, then just let it dry and come back to it. Because we create a bigger mess if we try to keep messing with it while it's wet, then it just yeah. grows. Great tip. Um, Sarah's saying, someone mentioned left-handed issues with palette knives. Do you know any brands that would cater for left-handers? I have not. I'm not sure how that would differ. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know an answer to that. No, I'm not sure. Um, it's a great question. We'll have to, yeah, we'll have a look into that. Um, Jenny says she's totally out of her comfort zone using paint, but exciting to try something new. Wonderful. Oh, good. It's always fun to try new stuff. You're never going to know if you like it until you try it. So what I'm doing now on this flower, I just wanted to kind of play with it and see. I did that deep magenta and then I just pulled in a little bit of my white and just threw it in there. And then you can start seeing how when you add a second color in, how you start seeing a little bit more of the dimension and the circular parts of the flower that we're gonna have. And then maybe, let's just see what happens here. We'll just go mostly white, see what color of flower we get with this. But just remember anything you do, you can always come back and paint over top of it. And that's one of the things I love about working with acrylic paint is once it's dry, you can literally paint over an entire painting if you wanted to. So you're not stuck with anything. Um, Cynthia says, some knives don't matter, but some are angled for right-handed use. Just something to be aware of. Okay, so the majority oh, of okay. the okay. There you go, we've learned something. Uh, Les said, yeah, I'm left-handed and I have used palette knives. I've never had a problem using them. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, because I was some of them are flat like this. And like, this is just the cheap one that I would use like in my classes because I had to, you know, buy a lot of them for a large class. Um, and I didn't have, and I know I had some left-handed people in there, but they didn't say specifically that they struggled with it. But that may have been because it was just a straight one. So before I add any more flowers... I'm going to go jump over to my greens and I want to add a little bit of greenery in here. So I like to get a little of both colors on there. Let's just have like a big leaf coming down here. Jane and says, again, oh, um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, Jane says her background is showing through her flowers. It will right now. So if you look close to mine, you'll see my background through mine as well. So we're gonna come back and put second coats on all of these flowers. So we're just kind of getting our layout down right now and we'll be adding more to it. Awesome, okay. Um, Tracy says, loving this mess I'm making. First time with a knife, no acrylics, I'm using oil. Ooh, fun. <laughs> I'd like to see some of these. Yeah, in fact, we've got a, an ash tag. So it's um, the weekly one, UAS Art Relief. So if you post all your pictures on Instagram, you can tag Christy. She's the social easel. I'll put all the links in afterwards because I know that she'd love to see your work. And so would I as well. So you can tag United Art Space. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, and then we can see all your lovely creations. And in fact, we should share them all um, so we can all see each other's work. Yeah, it'd be cool like if we went back and like made a collage of everyone's yeah, all, all their paintings yeah. and then posted that as like a as a post so everyone could yeah. see all the different styles. I love doing that. Definitely do that. Yeah. Got a little spider visiting my canvas here. Oh. Um so when you're doing the leaves, and I'm gonna show this other one as an example again. I just want you to notice how like messy it is. They're not like a perfect leaf shape. It's to just kind of give the idea of the greenery being behind there. And the same with like some of these different shapes. 
that we have coming out here. So just adding some interest, I'll probably add a few, you know, places of greenery that are going to come out here and there um, before I add any more flowers in, and then I'm going to go back to working on my flowers. So it's kind of like being a florist, like you're kind of just playing with the bouquet as you go, you're going to move things around um, and get things situated to where you like them. And I found this, I'll show you guys, this is good like inspiration piece. I found this in my daughter's room this morning. It was a jewelry box. Um, and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. can I steal that? I'm like, this is a really good example of the kinds of flowers. Now this was done in watercolor, but it gives you ideas of different greenery you could put in there, little mm -hmm. accent colors. That's so pretty. just something fun. So I think I'll add just a little coming out. I see that we've had more people join um, since we started. So do you want to do like a really quick recap on what, what we've done so far in case people are just tuning in? Sure. So we are working with um, palette knife painting with acrylics and um, just using our palette knife to do the flowers in the background. We used a bigger one to get the scrapes in the background. Just quick little pulls here and there. And we could even go back and add to this again once it starts drying. And we're doing palette knife just so you can kind of see the texture of, of the difference of working with palette knife versus a paintbrush. Um, and we are just building a little, little box of flowers, making a little spring bouquet right now. Right now I'm just going in and adding in some greenery and then we'll come back to adding in some more flowers. If anyone has any questions, please just fire away. Ask anything. There's something about like, to me, I love the sound. Isn't the sound of the palette knife relaxing to you? Like I just no, love it. It is. It the is. scrapes. <laughs> So yeah, you'll see as like as I'm going right now, there's going to be a lot of areas where that blue is still showing through and that's okay because we can come back and add more to it. So I'm going to do, there's my little happy accident, a little blob of paint came down there. So that's where a leaf will be. I'm just going to pull, I've got it on the palette knife here and I'm just doing a gentle pull down like a little stem that I'm going to have some little leaves come off of. And I'm just using just the like tip of my palette knife and just gentle kind of drags. Not a lot of heavy pressure. I'm liking the way that looks. So I think I may add another one of those up over here, maybe. Uh, Matthew's asking, what do I do if the flowers look overcrowded? I think I did too many. Um, I would let it dry before you tried to do anything, unless they're pretty like complementary colors like this. If you felt like you did too many, maybe you could combine some. I've done that in paintings where I'm like, oh, I just got everything too jumbled up there. And so I decided to make it just like one gigantic flower instead. So you could make the volume of your flowers, like make them bigger and less of them. And maybe that would help with the overcrowdedness also. Otherwise, you could let it dry and put a little background color or greenery in there and then come back and add flowers again. I love how when you start using the palette knife, all the colors start to mix as well. So you get lovely, lovely colors mixing by themselves. Yes, yes. That's what I love about it. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. you're not pre-mixing them. They just happen. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. get these fun little combinations depending on what it picks up. Like this, the green that I have right now, I accidentally grabbed a little bit of the teal with it. Mm -hmm. But then that's what I mean. Like I love these little accidents because I can just take more of that teal 
pull it into my greens and then I've got another shade of green that I can add in the painting. Yeah. Or you could let those little pops of teal just kind of show up. Sorry if you hear noise in the background. We are adding a deck onto the back of our house. So we're in right. construction here. <laughs> And another little thing I'll show you guys. So this is kind of one style of flower. Another style that I like to do is like in the top of this painting are like those taller flowers. I don't know specific names, <laughs> but you know, the taller flowers that kind of go up in a triangular shape with all the different little petals on them. So we can throw some of those in there to add some variation to the flower vase that we're making. I think I might do that with some yellow and white. I think that would be a good contrast to our colors that we've got. Cheryl's asking, could you tell us a little bit more about your training and your experience? Oh, sure. So um, I have been an artist my entire life. My mom was an artist. My grandpa was an artist, both in acrylic and oils. Um, so I've been painting since I was five and then I went to college. I was an art major in college, met my husband, and then um, he was older than me and he graduated. And so I moved with him and we moved to Dallas, Texas, and he became a chiropractor and I worked um, while he was in school and kind of put art on hold for several years. And then I became a mom. <laughs> we moved to Missouri where we live now. And I've got three daughters and they're 16, 13 and nine. Um, so for probably, probably about 10 years, I did not pick up a paintbrush and oh, wow. And how long? Ten, it was probably like 10 years. I didn't paint wow. and it was like, I couldn't like put my finger on like, like I'm kind of feeling depressed, like what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's like, I just completely cut this like creative part of myself out of my life. And I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Like I have to find some way to be creative. Like that's what fuels me. That's what brings me joy. And so um, after having my third daughter, I decided to go back to school and finish my degree. And at the time um, I did not think there was any way I could be a painter and people would pay me. <laughs> I was like, so I'm gonna have to do something in the digital world and so I majored in graphic design and went and, you know, did all the classes, but had to take some fundamentals again, like color theory and drawing and painting. And I loved every second of it. And it just reignited my passion for art. And I realized how much I missed it. And, um, and then it was my oldest daughter's 10th birthday and she wanted to do a paint party for her birthday. And she's like, mom, will you come up with a painting? And like, can we have my friends over and you'll teach us all how to paint? And I was like, yeah, that'll be fun. I can do that. So I did. And that's all I thought that was going to be. And then the moms came and they could not believe that their daughters had done these paintings. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you should do this for us. Like, will you do it like a grown up paint night? And that was the beginning of my business six and a half years ago. <laughs> um, and then I taught and have taught local classes, local paint nights for the last six and a half years. And then just two years ago, transitioned to the online world. And now we are celebrating our two year anniversary of my painting membership. And I've got to say, she's doing amazingly well. <laughs> <laughs> it's been amazing to watch your journey. It's it's been a crazy journey and an, an exciting one for sure. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, we we grew a lot just within the last like two months um, because I think people are finding and I'm sure your people will probably agree with this, that, you know, we need art is so healing. Art is so therapeutic and we need that right now. People yeah. need that and they need community and they need a place to feel connected when we can't all be together. Yeah, definitely. It's never going to go away. <laughs> it's so important. And you're proof that, you know, you can make money from art as well. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So don't, live, don't believe that lie that I believed <laughs> all those yeah. years ago. 
because yeah. the world is still hungry for it. And there are so many ways that you can make money at doing art and selling art and teaching art. Like it's, it's limitless and it's, you know, we can share this, like our philosophy, because I'm friends with lots of creatives, just like Michelle, all of our businesses are slightly different and it's community over competition. None of us compete with each other. We're not trying to one up the next person. We all just share and yeah. we share our love of art with those around us with like-minded women and all of us are successful. There's room for everyone. There is, there really is. And when you start thinking that way, it just opens up so many doors. And oh, it's, and it, honestly, it makes it so much more fun. Yeah. Like the fact that I'm getting to be here on your page today. Yeah. Like I text my mom this morning. I'm like, mom, I'm going to be like on a page over in the UK. <laughs> it's <is> pretty cool. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, in fact, actually, uh, where's that comment gone? Cheryl's saying, where in Missouri, uh, Missouri, I used to live in St. Joe. Oh, okay. Yeah, I live in Springfield, Missouri. There you go. So, a few hours away. Jean's saying, what a beautiful painting and what a great story too. I agree. Isn't she an inspiration? Um, Jane's, Jane's saying, how are you getting those small round dots shaped with the end of the palette knife? Here, let me show you. I'm going to flip here. I've got another little mixed media pen. Let me do that. Because this is so wet right now, if I turned the page, it'd be stuck together. So I'll show you guys a little bit closer. So my daughter's been in this one. See her cute little. <laughs> uh, we'll just use this page. So let me use the pink. Oops, a little too much on there. So it'll show up a little bit better for you. So we're going with like a basic, like triangular shape, but I don't want it to be like a stiff triangle but we're gonna start wider at the bottom and I'm just kind of touching down just with the tip. Is that a little easier for you guys to see? Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. And they're just little clusters. So just in your head, tell yourself, you're just making these little clusters of circles and they can touch, they can overlap, they can mix together a little bit, like it's fine. They don't all have to look the same or be the same size. But notice like as I'm going up, it's getting skinnier. That was a little accidental blob there, but you can kind of see what I mean by it getting smaller as we go. And I could even make this maybe a little bit wider. And it, like, it doesn't look like much on its own, right? Like it's just like a bunch of messy little dots, but when you throw it into a composition and you throw it into a thing of flowers, it starts looking like little flowers. Mm. Yeah, it looks really, really good. And I'm actually gonna take, I'm thinking, I was looking at that and I like that pink and I'm gonna take some of that and go mix it in with the yellow that I already put down. And when I do that, where it mixes, it's gonna make like this coral color because it's mixing the pink and the yellow together and we're gonna get like a really pretty coral. But I like doing like two colors. You could do yellow and white or pink and white, like in this one. So I did pink and white just to have some contrast in there, but you can see how messy those little blobs are together. I have really technical terms for all of my <laughs> like a blob. <laughs> but yeah, this is one of those things, like I could just keep going, you know, just keep building this painting and playing with it. And it's just a lot of fun. So I'm going to grab some of that to show you guys a little color mixing here. I've I talked about grabbing coral at the beginning, but you can make your own with the colors we already have on our palette. Uh, yeah, mixing it up there. I, I've got to say how um, I've never done this before, followed somebody else painting, and it's such a great idea. So your membership is just, it's just brilliant because, you know, sometimes when you want to just make a painting or do something or be creative, 
you don't know where to start and you bought or maybe you're completely new and you don't know how to do things so just watching you and how you apply like you've just shown us with that palette knife it's so valuable so yeah valuable. and it's you know and anyone can learn it so like even if you've never picked up a paintbrush or a palette knife or anything and you're like that's cool but i can't do it you really can because you can just take these little steps and if you don't catch them the first time go back you can go back and watch this video it'll stay on michelle's page you can go back and watch it again and practice that technique again yeah but so there we just made our own little coral i add a little extra yellow around the edge to kind of give a little highlight maybe we'll do another one that color over here so nothing too exact i mean this one might be slightly different color than the last one i did because i'm not mixing the same ratio of paint but it's just kind of having fun see how much paint i have on there and then just seeing what happens and maybe this one will tuck behind these other flowers here Cynthia's saying thank you so much for this it's fun to just play you're helping break my painting block which is yes. good because I have a large painting to do it's been um patiently waiting in my closet <laughs> that's awesome and it, that's all it is and it's just like getting out of our head getting out of our mold and yeah. it's sometimes literally just following another artist and being like okay how'd they do that because yeah. you know I was telling my group the other day as artists, I don't think we ever quit learning. Like if you quit learning, one, that's no fun. Like mm -hmm. there is always art to be inspired by and new techniques you can learn that you don't know yet. And oh, I'm still yeah. learning from other artists and I still take classes myself to learn new mm -hmm. techniques that I haven't done before. Um, so yeah, just so always true. keep growing and learning. It's so true. And I think the deeper you go, there's just, it's like a never ending box of things to learn because my friend Sharon, uh, she's a ceramicist and she's been a ceramicist for 25 years and she's on the lockdown and she said, I'm using this time to research materials. And you'd think that she knows everything about ceramics, but there's still more to learn. She, she said, it's Absolutely. just you know, there's always more to learn. There is. And the yeah. more you keep practicing and playing and, you know yeah you're gonna just you're gonna discover talents in yourself that you didn't even know you had yeah like, i didn't even know i could use a palette knife until i started doing some lessons in it and then i was like oh my gosh this is so fun now i'm gonna go teach a whole bunch of other people how to use a palette knife <laughs> well yeah and if you look at christy's story it's, it's taken you now to a whole new world where you've got an online business you, you know you're doing in-person things online things and it's just changed your life, hasn't it? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, a hundred, a hundred percent. Um, you know, but when I was teaching paint nights, um, you know, I was gone two to three nights a week. And like I said, I had three daughters and that was just hard on the family. Plus when I was going to school, I was like burning a candle at both ends. Like it was too much. Yeah. Um, and then slowly as this, it was like baby steps. Like once I started building my online business last summer was the big first step for me. And I was able to take the summer off to be with my girls oh, and not do local really? paint nights. And I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, this is huge. And then by September, I was able to cut down to once a week and it yeah. just kept slowly, you know, changing. And now I'm so, so thankful because we would be in a world of trouble right now if all I had was my local business. Yeah. and we would really be hurting um and it's been able to help support us during this time and you know i mentioned my husband being a, a doctor he's a chiropractor and right now he can't see his patients because we just don't think it's safe yeah. um and you know there's no point in taking chances and he's able to stay at home with us um during this time and not have to put himself at risk or others at risk so it's just allowed a lot, a lot of more freedom and time in our life. Yeah. Um, Tracy's asking, do you go in later with your light and shade? Yes. So yeah, we're, we're kind of getting to that point right now. I kind of wanted to get a few more colors down. Like maybe I think I still want to do like another flower out here. And then I'm going to start coming in and you'll start see the painting really start coming together. We'll start adding in some accents and highlights. 
And then I kind of did this while we were talking, but I always like to add like those little pops of color in unexpected places. So I had that coral that I created on my palette knife and I thought, mm -hmm. well, that would be cool if I just scrape a little bit of that down into my vase. And I'm kind of mm -hmm. thinking the same thing. And this is what I mean by see how different. So this vase is dry. And so now when I do these like scrapes over top of it, it just catches here and there and you get that cool effect. Yeah. That you can't get with a paintbrush. Yeah, that's so good. Um, Cynthia says, agreed, never quit learning. And inspiration from each other is endless. So true. Um, yes. She also says, cheating and getting my blow dryer out. I hate drying. <laughs> Hey, that's not cheating at all. I do it all the time. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I don't have the patience to wait for something to dry, especially with this thick of paint. This will take a while to dry. Make sure you let it dry flat. Um, I wouldn't prop it up because I made that mistake before. You'll get some drips. It's going to change the way your painting looks. So, yeah, a blow dryer is a handy thing to have at your workstation. I think I just got blue paint all over my face. <laughs> <laughs> You're always saying, gosh, I completely diverted from the guidance. I love palette knives and got carried away on my own journey. Still flowers though. Wonderful. Yes, that's what we want. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to start coming in. I'm adding, this was our, like, we had that pink base that I showed you guys with the paintbrush instead, just to show you the difference of what that looked like. And now I'm coming back and I'm adding more pink on top of it. So those of you that were saying, you know, earlier of my background, I can see my background coming through. This is where that will change. When we start putting these second layers on here, they're gonna get thicker and you're not gonna see your background anymore. So I usually stick with like one color at a time. So I'm gonna do all my pinks and then you'll decide which flowers you want on top. You can still change your mind on that right now. So right now I have this deep, magenta one on top of this but if i wanted to i could reverse that and make that pink one on top but i'm just going to go up next to that not go over it and then i'll probably pull that deep magenta back out maybe even a little bit further over that pink one so hopefully you guys are starting to see it's a little bit thicker you're not seeing the background as much yeah you can pick up some uh, versatile colors in here. So let's say when we come back around, start adding in that had some teal in it. I'm going to leave it and let it be. Um, but if you wanted to add some white. And again, we're kind of doing like these curved shapes. Kind of like think of like parentheses around our flower. I'm going to get a little more white here. Mine got a little mixed in with the teal. So this pink is still obviously very wet. And then I can grab this white. Kind of pull that, maybe just have it on that one side, like the lights hitting over there. We could do some darker on the other. And they're just messy, quick little pulls of color. Or you could make yourself a whole nother shade, a tint of pink. To start throwing in. I love all the colors now in your in your flowers. Wow. Yeah, it's starting to come together. Yeah. Getting a little bit more of my light orchid here. See, that was pretty. That still had some pink on my palette knife and it just pulled that into that purple mm -hmm. flower and that looks really pretty. So I usually in the center of mine will start doing um, like a bold middle part, the center of the flower. So um, like in that first painting I showed you, it was like a dark navy and plum color. A lot of them I'll add black centers in. 
And again, I'm not really painting to be realistic. I don't have a specific flower in my head, you know, that I'm trying to duplicate. These are like just Christy flowers. <laughs> so <laughs> you can make them whatever you want. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? You can either just like run wild, like Dor Dory's just said, she's just going with it and seeing what comes yeah. out. Or you could have a little inspirational picture in front of you, like Christy was showing us earlier, um, to get the idea of some shapes. And um, so, yeah, whatever works. Yeah, so like if you look at the centers of theirs, you know, these actually have a little bit of green in them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you could do anything you wanted to. Green, navy, black, like it just gives it that little pop. And once we start adding the centers on, I think you guys are really going to see um, the difference in how the flowers start coming together. And you can even change, like even adding the circles in, it doesn't always have to be in the center of that flower. Like maybe on, well, let's say this one, like We'll just pull this really quick. I'm gonna grab a little black. We'll see if that's what I want it to be or not. But let's say you do it a little off-centered. I'm gonna get black and then some of that plum. What if we did it over on the side instead? And then we could come back with our plum and kind of pull that around and it kind of looks like that flower is opening to the side instead of straight on. And then here, I'm just scooping up the black and then just going in the center. I personally love the contrast of the black. It just is. Yeah, it really, yeah, it adds. It's just real bold. And then you can like work yeah. around it and decide like, how much you want to show. Dan's asking, will my daughter be able to watch this again in the morning? Yes, absolutely. It will still be available. The links will still work and take you to the replay. Yeah, that's the great thing about these. You guys can go back and watch it again and again. Yeah. And I do have, like, um, you guys can follow me on YouTube. Everything is just under the social easel, so very easy to find me. Um, but there are several... YouTube videos that um, I'm pretty sure I even have like another version of this. You can see me do some other um, abstract flowers, but all kinds of things, landscapes and just techniques. Like today I did color mixing on my page this morning. So if you're wanting to learn more about acrylic painting and techniques and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I know Michelle has a link she can share with you guys for more information too. Yeah, I will do that. Oh, almost forgot my center in the middle of this one. And I'm really like, I'll just scrape up whatever I had left on my palette, try to use it all up. So we're about done. It's looking great. And um, Alison's just tuned in and says, hello, I haven't used a palette knife before for painting with. Well, you're in the right place, Alison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've just tuned in, um, but you can watch from the beginning if you have. Um, but I hope you're enjoying it. Dory says, I've realized I'm painting under artificial light. Not very good one. So I may have a surprise in the morning when I see its true colors. <laughs> <laughs> 
remember that used to happen a lot at like when I did the local classes and the lighting would just maybe be a little off because I did uh, like traveling classes. So um, I didn't have my own brick and mortar. I went into restaurants. So it was always a different location. And then they get home and they're like, oh, it looks completely different in my light <laughs> than it did at the restaurant. <laughs> Everyone's saying, oh, this is delicious. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. And then sometimes I like to go back in with white or pretty close to it. Mine's got a lot of colors in it. And I like just doing those little dots of white here and there, like baby's breath mixed in. Nice. Yeah. Just to make it pop. Yeah. Maybe pull in a little bit more dark green here in some of my leaves. And another thing I recommend to people um, when you're working on your artwork. So like one thing I love about teaching live is that I can pull it up and stream it on my iPad. So I can see what you're seeing from a different point of view. And that allows me to look at my painting from a different perspective and see where I want to change something. So as I'm looking at it and seeing what you guys are seeing, I'm noticing how lost this gets over here mm -hmm. in the blue. But in person, it didn't look like that to me. So mm -hmm. I always tell my students, like, take pictures of your art while yeah. you're working and then look at it on your phone. And yeah. so you'll see something in your phone that you don't see in person. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I've done that before. Yeah. And I just see this, it's so strange how the camera picks up dif differently to our own eyes. Yes. And it's, it's very, very, very helpful. Um, especially if you're just like learning and you're just not sure how things are, you know, working together or coming across. Like if you, you don't know if you need to change something, taking a picture will really simplify that process for you. Great tip. Okay. So I'm doing a little darker green just to give it a little bit more contrast against that blue. I was thinking the same thing maybe up here with this leaf. And you could even like, I know right now you would think, well, there's no way to redo the background. Like what if I wish I would have done a different color? you can even come back and change up your background after you've done your flowers. Like I did a lot of this, this was black underneath and then I scraped the cream over top of it. Yeah. And that's the cool thing about palette knife painting is even when I do that, even if it kind of looks like, well, there's this like blue halo around the vase, it kind of adds to it. So if I wanted to go back and, you know, maybe add more of a, Let's just grab some white. We're just going to play with it. I may change my mind and not like it. And then I'll make it blue again. But <laughs> you can take the white and start adding it back in. And just going around the shapes that you already have. And it doesn't have to hide all the blue. But you, I guess my point is you can still always go back and change things. In yeah, don't be too precious about it. Just have a play and alter things and know that you can turn it back. Yeah. So, I don't know. I may like the wider background. I may not. I'm going to jump over in two different sections of the painting and see if I like it or not. I love how you're doing your backgrounds with the palette knife as well, because I've used a palette knife before, but I've never used it for the full background. I've always um, used the brush for that. Yeah, it's actually one of my favorite ways to do a background now because it's so fast and free and messy. Like, it's just, I don't know, it's very satisfying to physically do, but I also just love the look of it when it's done. Yeah. yeah. 
And so tell us, um, Chrissy, because you've got uh, an event coming up soon, haven't you, where people can do live painting with you? Yes. So, yeah, if you guys want to learn more, and it will not be palette knife, this will actually be with a filbert brush. I did almost this entire painting with one brush, which is fun because I can show you how one brush, you can do a million different things with it. Yeah. So completely different style. I do lots of different types of art, um, oh, but this is one of my newest oh, paintings. So I love these little fat birds. <laughs> so I taught this in my membership last week to, uh, you know, the women in my tribe and we had so much fun painting it. And then I posted the finished piece and I was asking people on my page, I'm like, does anyone want to learn to do this? I'm like, maybe I'll do like a pop-up paint party. And everyone wanted to learn how to paint it. So we have a pop-up paint party. It's $25. You can sign up to learn how to do this with me. And it's a two-day class. So we'll have two sessions live inside a private Facebook group. Um, and it starts next Sunday night. So awesome. That's amazing. And then you can go back, like, because we're, our time uh, frame is obviously very different from yours. And I think yeah. the time change, that would probably be in the middle of the night for you guys. Um, yeah. But you can go back, just like I mentioned before, they stay in the Facebook group. You guys will have access to them forever. So you can go back and view them whenever you want. And it comes with a uh, template. So you don't have to freehand those birds. You can trace the basic design onto your canvas. It comes with a color list so you know what colors um, I used, but by all means, you can use whatever you want. So yeah, this is our next um, event that we have coming up and you guys can do a live paint class with me. Awesome. I've just put the link in the comments. If you guys want to take a look and read more about that, then please do. Um, but that would be so much fun. And that's two days. Yeah. And it's awesome because it's, like I said, it's in a private Facebook group and you'll get to meet some of the women like from my tribe and they're in there to help and assist you. Like if you aren't comfortable painting or it's all really new to you, you're gonna be surrounded with other women who are in the same boat as you. And then you're gonna be surrounded with women who can kind of help, you know, be your mentor and guide in there as well. It's great accountability though as well. You know, even if you experience, people are just so blocked. I'm speaking to so many artists that are just saying at the moment, I just can't make. And maybe because you're at home now and there's no inspiration or you're just feeling like your head is full of stress. Um, you know, it's just a nice way to just focus on something, be fed the information so you don't have to think too much. Exactly. Be accountable to making because... I mean, come on. oh, it's so therapeutic. Has everyone enjoyed this? Because I'm just so relaxed. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it really is like therapy. A lot of my women joke about it. They're like, you're cheaper than paying for a therapist. Like, this is way cheaper than going to therapy every single week. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like, even speaking to that, you know, during this time, you know, statistics are showing that anxiety is going up for people, depression is going up for people. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm very vocal about my past. I have struggled with depression and anxiety my entire life. Um, yeah. And painting helps me a ton with that. And I know it does so many of the women that paint with me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, even if you're feeling stressed or alone or whatever it may be, join us for that join us for the community to get you know focus on something else let doing painting doing any kind of art is not only a release for your body but it allows your brain to take a break um and mental breaks are good <laughs> yeah but also you know learning new techniques um you know if, even if you're an experienced artist just doing something different that you wouldn't usually do it opens yeah. up opens up your mind and that's what I was going to say. I mean, little lessons I've taken here and there, like doing a painting like this one time. And then I'm like, well, wait, if I could do it with flowers, then what would it look like with this? And then it just kind of opens your mind to new possibilities. And I guess, so what do you guys think about the, the white background versus the blue? I actually think I like the white better now that I have it on there. Yeah, I think the flowers pop more. They they kind of really stand mm -hmm. out. Yeah, and it's nice because you still have the blue peeping through. So, yeah. Yeah, Cynthia's saying, great therapy, great company. Thank you. Awesome. 
Uh, Sarah saying, yes, I'm just watching rather than painting with you. It's relaxing to watch. We'll try this when I buy a palette knife. Thank you so much. Very cool. I'm going to hold this up a little for you guys to see a little bit closer and maybe some more detail in it. Look, I used up almost my entire plate of paints here. <laughs> I can still probably go back and find somewhere to put that light orchid if I wanted. But hopefully this will give you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Rebecca says, love the white. Did he says, I'm smearing all my extra paint from my palette onto another canvas just everywhere. It's a crazy background. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy says she preferred the blue. Preferred the blue? Yeah, Tracy did, yeah. <laughs> the white but I like the way, I do like the way it kind of, I uh, can't speak, gives that little bit of like outlining around it. It's kind of cool looking too. Yeah. Wow, and look how quickly, that's like taken us an hour and you can have the complete artwork in an hour. I know, wow. how fun is that? <laughs> I'm a bit slow. <laughs> I think I need another, another hour, but. You should show, show us your progress so far. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me just flip the screen back so I'm back, yay, I'm back. Um, so this is mine. <laughs> I, I'm mine, I, I need more flowers and I need more depth, but. I got so carried away in the background. <laughs> oh, I like the color of the background though. I like the yellow. The yellow. And I kind of like the color of the um, the vase as well, but I'm not so keen on the, the flowers. Some of them <laughs> I'm not keen on. Yeah, I like the, I really the yellow. I really these bits as well. You know these bits. <laughs> They've ended up just looking like horns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I did enjoy that. Good, good, good. Like, it'll be interesting to see, like everyone can, you know, choose a completely different color of background and vase and flowers. I mean, think of how different all of these are gonna look. Mm, yeah, Laura says, I love how you teach. Thank you so much for this lesson. She is amazing. Um, and honestly, you'll learn so much from Christy because um, just in terms of how she's, you know, created a whole lifestyle around her art as well um, from a, that point of view, not just the technical side, but honestly, I'm so inspired by by Christy and um, everything that she's she's done with her art. It's just incredible, incredible. And well, impacting so much. And impacting so many lives. I mean, you've got so many people in your membership now and helping all those people to be more confident as an artist and just, you know, express themselves and help people move past their blocks. It's incredible. I love it. I love it too. I mean, I am just so, so thankful. Um, I'm going to flip you guys around so I don't feel like I'm talking to a, a wall here. Am I the right right way? Yeah, <laughs> let me do that. Um, but no, it's, it's so much fun for me too. And, you know, I was telling the women last week we did a Zoom call so we can talk to each other like this and see each other face to face and you know, everyone's sharing their stories about how much being in the tribe has changed their lives and for multiple reasons, for the confidence, for self-esteem, um, you know, helping with anxiety and depression are hard things that are going on in their life. Mm -hmm. And it's giving them an outlet to step away and yeah. do something else. Yeah. Um, but I told them, I'm like, I need you guys as much as you need me. Like it is such a back and forth. Like I love my ladies. Um, you know, I pour into that group and constantly have stuff for them. And we, you know, we've upped, we've upped it all since um, the entire pandemic, because I just want our group to be a safe haven. I want our group to be a place that they can go, that they feel loved, that they feel uplifted. And, you know, my goal is to just bring joy through art. Um, and it's just so much fun. <laughs> It is. It is. Thank you so much. Has anyone got any questions for Christy before we start wrapping up? I've just put the link again. Go and check it out, guys. It's a two day event. It will be amazing. Something to distract yourself from what's going on at the moment. Just immerse yourself with other people to make those sweet little birdies. Um, but if you've got any questions now, please do ask Christy whilst we're still live. Um, anything on art, anything to do with art, you know, if you've got, yeah, any I was gonna say anything to do with art, anything to do yeah. with, you know, the business, like whatever, yeah. it is, whatever it is yeah. you guys are doing. 
we'll, we'll, we'll wait a couple more minutes. Um, Jane says, this was fabulous. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Tracy said, that was fun. First time with my homemade cardboard knife. Brilliant. Nice. <laughs> so thick and heavy opposed to my usual fine work. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice to just do something different to what you usually do. Um, Alicia, thank you so much, Christy. I loved seeing your process and your gorgeous flowers. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to see if there's any questions. Thank you both for bringing this lesson to us. Stay safe, guys. Yes, yeah, see you um, on the next one. Will do. Um, so, uh, Marita says, thank you so much. I enjoyed watching your technique. That was so lovely. I love your earrings, Christy, says Amanda. <laughs> thank you. My little painterly. <laughs> you always got great earrings. Oh, I, I do. I, so I love that earrings. <laughs> I have the most ridiculous collection of earrings, but the sad thing is I lose them as fast as I buy them because I'm a mess. You look at my studio. So <laughs> they're all over the house and my husband just keeps picking them up and putting them in piles. For me. <laughs> um, Cynthia saying, thank you. Is there somewhere everyone will share today's paintings? Loved it. That was great. I think there's obviously the group, the virtual art studio where you can go and, sh and and share them in there. Make sure you use the hashtag UAS Art Relief. Um, on Instagram, post the artwork on Instagram with that hashtag. I will write it in the comments now um, and tag us both. And then we will make a collage of everyone's work. I will pull that together and we'll send that out on Friday. Yeah, so, that will be really cool. Yeah, if you guys will tag me on Instagram, I would love to see the pictures. So yeah, that's yeah. probably the easiest way for us to just go back and check I think everybody's so. artwork out. Yeah, sure. I think on Instagram is the best way. Yeah. Um, wondering how you go from live teaching to online teaching, asks June. Um, how how so I, I went from live teaching to online. Um, so I got a business coach. <laughs> um, and, you know, when I did my local classes, uh, I was self-taught. I ran that entire thing by myself. I was a one woman show. I did every aspect of my business. And um, we were hitting a point where it was getting a little stagnant, you know, and then I was like January. January is always a rough month for local businesses. And I was like, I have got to figure something else out. I'm tired of being stressed out every January and February or we have cancellations because of snow and whatever else. And I just happened to be on Facebook one night and I found Jennifer Allwood. Um, if you guys don't know her. She's a great um, person to start following. She's a creative. Um, she used to uh, paint furniture and she turned her whole business is completely different now. She doesn't teach that anymore. She teaches business. Um, but uh, yeah, I just started learning from Jennifer and I soaked up everything she did and learned, bought the equipment that I needed and slowly started teaching myself what to do. And then um, how Michelle and I met, both of us have the same business coach, Stu McLaren, um, who teaches tribe and he teaches us how to build memberships and, um, he is brilliant and I'm pretty sure both of us can say, we can't say enough about Stu, yeah, but you know, honestly, finding, uh, finding the right people to coach and guide you, I could not have done it by myself. And then finding like, like-minded women, um, and people that are doing the same thing you're doing. Cause you help build each other up and you're all going through the same concerns and struggles. And how did you do that? Oh, that's brilliant. You know, like all that stuff. And so, yeah, it, it takes a lot, but once you get going, then you get more comfortable with it. And wouldn't you say, Michelle, it was like similar for you getting into the online world? Oh yeah. I mean, it was three years ago now. And I remember doing my first live video. Uh, it was on Periscope. Cause that's how you did lives back then. Facebook, oh, yeah, and I was on Periscope, and I, I didn't think anyone was watching. I thought it was like a pretend one, um, because I hadn't pressed the live button. And so I was in my kitchen just chatting, to, uh, <laughs> and then I realized there was like 100 people watching. <laughs> 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 that was my first ever live. I should see if I've got that recorded because it was hilarious. I was just in my kitchen, like, I'm just doing some eggs, and like, <laughs> um, oh my gosh, but, I was so nervous during my first ones, like. I'm so awkward, like you, you, and you look at the numbers on the screen and you're like, one person's watching me. So then you just kind of feel like you're talking to no one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you get more, but I was fine. Like once I turned the camera around and it was just focused on my hands and, and painting, then mm -hmm. I was just me again. Like I was fine yeah. once I was off the camera and it, I, I was just doing what I did in real life 
but you guys, and I told, you know, my students this when I was teaching locally, I'm like, if you guys want a really, really good, you know, upfront and close view, you should follow me online because in class I would stand, this is my easel, by the way, that's what I used to teach on. And I'd have that easel at the front of the classroom. And I'd usually teach 40 women at a time and they're in rows of tables behind me. And so I'm having to back up, show them the canvas, you know, pick it up and walk around, work with them one-on-one, -on -one. but it was hard for them to see what I was doing. And with this, you guys are, you know, this far away yeah. from my canvas. So yeah, once I, and I actually found that um, I love the, um, I love the live events because you get to talk and, you know, commune with people. But as far as teaching, I like teaching online so much more because I feel like I can give so much more. Like it's so much easier for me to teach online. I think as well for the students, I think um, they may be prone to ask more questions online. Because oh, yeah. You, can, you know, it's more anonymous. You're just hiding behind a little profile picture. Whereas <laughs> in the class, it's kind of scary to go, oh, oh, I'm struggling. So people probably get much more out of it online. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's the that's the basics of how I did it. Um, but hopefully that helps. And there's there's tons of coaches out there that, you know, for creatives and, and different things. Um, you know, some of my business friends and I, I won't say too much, but we may have something coming down the lines here in the next few months that's going to be geared at helping creatives get their businesses going. So awesome. that'll be exciting. Too. <laughs> um, Jill, say thank you so much for a lovely e evening. I have never painted before and have made mine using a plastic spoon palette knife. Wonderful. Oh, awesome. I'm going to put all the links now um, for what we've discussed. There's also a list that Christy has made for materials as well. If you want to go and check those out to see what she uses, um, there's a link there as well. So I will pop all the links in now so you can go and follow. And please send us your artworks. We'd love to see. Thank you so much, Christy, yes. for joining us. I really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. It was so much fun. It was, it was, it's so good. And so we'll send you all lots of love, everyone. Stay safe, take care, and see you all soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye. bye.